I remember it was 4 a.m. and I was waking up for the first day of work and I had only gotten a few hours of sleep. I had to go to Pittsburgh International Airport. <laughs> What's good everyone, my name is Kyle and in this week's video I'm talking about my first engineering internship experience. I worked for a consulting company in the role of an analyst and this ended up lasting for three rotations which adds up to about a year in total length. The focus of the video though is not going to be on the company itself but just going to be on first impressions and thoughts throughout my internship, stuff like that. So going into this internship I had two industrial engineering classes under my belt. The first was introduction to industrial engineering and the second was industrial engineering management systems. So for anyone in other majors, those are our two like highest classes, high level classes that kind of describe everything in the major in bits and pieces. Um, just a little quick self-evaluation of myself, I would say that a realistic, <laughs> realistic self-evaluation, I would say that my social skills were my biggest asset going into this. Um, I'd say that I was average or slightly above average, being able to like talk with someone and quickly pick up on things. I would say that my problem solving skills were average, maybe below average. Yeah, probably below average. I'll go with below average. And then my technical skills were for sure the lowest of these, of these three things. Like my technical skills were only what I learned in these two classes and outside of that I didn't have a lot. I remember it was 4 a.m. and I was waking up for the first day of work and I had only gotten a few hours of sleep. I had to go to Pittsburgh International Airport. Like I said, this was consulting and fly out to our work location and then work that day. And we already had like an orientation class and uh, we got to meet everyone and we were taught like a lot of like the standard work and a lot of like what we were doing. Uh, went over the project, we did everything like that. So I just had to wake up, get to Pittsburgh airport, fly out and then begin work, my real first day of work. And I was extremely nervous. I think it was a, a mix actually. It was probably a mix between blind confidence and nervous at the same time. Not sure if that's good or bad, but it is what it is. And, um, and yeah, and I, I was nervous. I think I was nervous because I wasn't sure, I wasn't sure if I was gonna be able to like hold up to everything that I was expected to do at the time. And these are things I think everyone kind of feels on the first day or first day at a new job or whatever. Now fast forward a few days into this internship, I was working with people from my school, I was working with people from like interns from my school, I was working with interns from other schools, this and that. Um, and what kind of helped me get rid of that nervousness and the feeling that, man, I might not know how to do all these technical things was not being afraid to ask people questions. I was like acknowledging the fact that they might be better at me in this area, in that area, in this area. And they were. A lot of different interns had different specializations that they were good at. Some were good with Excel, some were better with uh, building materials and like just general classroom knowledge. So I wasn't afraid to, don't think that these are like keys or anything. I'm just giving you an idea of like what helped relieve some nervousness off me and like get me going in the right direction. And it was pretty much just putting my pride down. It's not easy for me. But uh, it was just putting my pride down, not saying like I'm competing with these interns, but just going up to them and talking to them and be like, hey, can you help me figure this out? Or are we heading in the right direction here? Are we doing the same thing? I'm not very good with Excel. Can you show me how to do this? Uh, and one more actually really important thing is if you're not sure of what you're doing, like as a group of interns or like as an individual, say you're working by yourself, do not be afraid to ask the manager questions, your manager. Don't be afraid to ask him questions because I promise you it's better to get the questions out right away or let him know what you know and what you don't know out the gate than for you to get like two or three weeks in and find out you were heading in the wrong direction this whole time with this project. You know, I'm just putting it out that some people's managers on these internships, some are real engaged, some are not engaged. Sometimes you switch managers throughout the time. And uh, just keep in mind you always want to be informed and let them know what you know in the current time. And the other thing that made a really, really big impression on me and might be the most important of all this is that companies, no matter how big, no matter how small they are, they're all vulnerable and they all need more information, more data, more help. They all have waste, they all have flaws in their processes. And the reason why I'm saying this, it might be obvious to a lot of you guys now, but when I was a kid, I would walk into stores like Best Buy, I'd walk into malls, I'd walk into all these places. I'm just gonna name brands. Chick-fil-A, Canon, Sony, Apple. I would walk into all these stores or places and would think like, man, these places have it all figured out. 
like someone would complain about it or like a process or something, I'd be like, man, don't you realize that like, they have it all done? They know how to do all this stuff. And as soon as I really started like getting my hands on things and nosing things, no company in the world has it all figured out. They need engineers like you and I and or any any they need people to come in and give them information. They need people to come in and guide them along the way with data, with an educated perspective. So don't be afraid to step out and make mistakes here and there whenever you're at these internships or at these companies because they do it all the freaking time. I feel like if we were being very neutral about this, we could make a case for both sides that would hold up reasonably well, and I'm sure that we could find research on both ends as well. But just from my experience and just subjectiveness here, so it doesn't need to be not necessarily true. Um, I worked with interns, like I said earlier, from both my school and other schools. In certain areas, I could see myself doing equally as good as them in, right? And their GPAs, I guarantee were better than mine. Guarantee it. But I will say that, so my, my point here is, is that if you have a bad GPA, it doesn't mean you can't do these things well. But I will say that the people who did tend to have better GPAs seemed to have more in their toolbox here. It seemed like they had more stuff to like recall quickly and just kind of like pull it out and go with it, right? As to where someone like me, um, I probably had to like go back to my desk or whatever and like figure some stuff out and then come back with it. Now, could that be because I only had two classes at the time? That might have had something to do with it. It might have been a big factor. I might have never learned what they were recalling. But I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna say that you can't ever know too much information here. Does that make sense? So like, if you have, if you're actually learning what you're going to class to learn, right, and it's not, you're not losing a lot of information, then you can always recall it out in the field. But if you never learned it to begin with because you weren't going to class or weren't paying attention or whatever, obviously you're gonna have a more difficult job. I remember talking with engineers out in the field, and a lot of them weren't working in the specific area that they graduated. For example, I talked to an aerospace engineer, I forget exactly what he did, but he, he was aerospace and then he started working in like a different branch of engineering. And I noticed this over and over again. I can't give a lot of examples, but I do remember seeing this and I'm not sure exactly why. Some were happy with the placement, some weren't, but I was not expecting that. I was expecting everyone, like if you graduate in uh, electrical or if you graduate in petroleum or if you graduate in industrial, I just figured you'd be working that exact area outside of school, but I have like even more than a handful of cases who were completely different from that. And for the other one, I know you guys are gonna call me naive about this, but as a millennial, I'm used to thinking work environment as of like what, I know not exactly what Google's providing their employees or, but more closer to like what we see as, as media companies. So like I think of, when I think of work, I think of like going to work, I think of like a media companies. Um, type vibe. So if you think of like BuzzFeed or all these new companies that we see every day in the media, on social media, on like YouTube, places where people work and they vlog or whatever, that's what I think of when I, when I think of like going to work and stuff. And the majority of workplaces that I was at were not like that. They weren't like that in any way, shape or form. Like you would walk into a manufacturing facility, keep in mind, I hadn't been to like many like manufacturing facilities, distribution centers, obviously retail. But I haven't been to a lot of these places before that point. And when you go to a lot of these places, there's just a cubicle in the middle of like a, a metal floor. Or like um, you walk in and there might be like a sectioned off office area, but just straight cubicles. And I understand that. And it makes sense to me now the more I think about it. But just as like a millennial, like growing up with social media and like seeing all these diverse work environments where people are um, collaborating and like, glass writing walls and like all these types of things I really did with all my heart think that more places would be like this the first one is do anything you can to get around the work you want to do so this the idea behind this is if you want to work in a particular sector say tech say aerospace say whatever you want to try to get do your best to get an internship in one of these areas so you can put it down your resume that you have experience working around these types of things even if it's a super easy analyst entry-level position this is the stuff you want to get around. And once you get that stuff on your resume, it's going to look more appealing to everyone in the process. If you aren't lucky enough to be in that first camp of you know exactly what you want to do, then you want to taste and try as much things as you can along the way. So don't wait for that internship or don't wait for like the first internship or the second internship you have just to try different things. Of course, try different things then. But during the school year, I guarantee there are people on like research projects or um, professors you have consulting or whatever that you could be networking throughout your school finding out like when they're going on different like visits or whatever 
and you could just simply like get in with them and ask to tag along or ask to like help out with a different project or whatever. A lot of times there are clubs on campuses that have visits. Be sure to like explore all your options here because you don't wanna go to just one or two internships and then that be the only experience you have in your field. And piggybacking off of that last one that I just gave, the third one is your knowledge is your knowledge. The more of these experiences you're getting and trying, not only are you sifting through and deciding like, oh, I like this, I don't like this, I definitely don't like this. The more you're doing that, you're actually also getting experience. Don't go in and just say you don't like it and pass it off, right? Your knowledge is your knowledge. So everything that you learn in the process, right? Oh, this process is great. This, this manufacturing idea works. This doesn't work. This works in this situation. In this sector, in this uh, industry, this is like the most popular thing to do and these are standards. Like you can take all that information and roll it over throughout your life. And I know that seems like a simple thing, but originally like I didn't really understand it. I would go to a place and I'd be like, this ain't for me, I'd check out. Still pay attention guys, realize that everything that you're accruing in, in this time allotment, everything that these professors are telling you, it's gonna keep rolling over. Keep gathering these experiences and keep learning. You'll be able to apply down the road, I promise. And this is the end of the video guys. Hit the like button if you like it. Leave a comment, most importantly, you don't have to subscribe good, bad, ugly feedback. Let me know what kind of videos you want to see. I don't care. Just leave a comment. I love the engagement that are on the other videos. I think it's cool. I like how everyone's getting involved. And other than that, I think that's all. This rubber, I'm going to burn this gasoline and set it on fire, 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 fire. Oh, someone sees it,